Hello everybody, welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to manage lag on your server. As absolutely stunning as this town became just within the first week. The instance count exceeded 16,000, 17,000 instances. And basically it became unplayable for a solid portion of the players. It's one thing just walking around town, but this is just single player. Imagine what it was like with seven other people around all in the same area. It, it essentially became intolerable. The rest of this video will help any of you who play on a dedicated server. You don't have to manage one to benefit from understanding how this all works. And essentially what happened here is people made bases way too close to each other. And this is with people not having fully progressed bases. And the first thing is you should probably have some kind of ban on breeders of all kinds, at least in the town area. Uh, you'll see why in a second. This may just look like an unopposing small shack that has little contribution to the lag of the area. But let's inspect this a little bit closer. Oh, it looks so good up here. It's pretty clear. It's pretty nice. Nothing too crazy. But what's this? Oh, there seems to be some kind of basement. And Is that a wolf head? Okay, something, something's going on in this basement. What on earth is this? This is the kind of stuff, oh my god, <laughs> dear, what is this? Now, don't get me wrong, building breeders in Valheim is a lot of fun, and it's cool following the builds and all of that, and they can be really useful. It's cool. I'm not trying to diss breeders. But this kind of stuff is inevitable, and it causes so many problems for people, especially when they have lower end PCs or they're really far away from the server. I mean, let's just look at the difference that culling off all of these does to my frame rate just from being here, even with the whole town loaded. We can see that it's hovering between 12 and around 16 frames per second. Right, here we go. So all that we have done is just killed off every tamed creature. And you can see that our frame rate now is above 20. It's actually between 22 and 25. And keep in mind, this is with having the whole rest of town still loaded. You can see that I still have around 17,000 instances, but it made a significant difference in my frame rate just culling off the tamed monsters you saw there. And so if you're lucky, just making sure that people keep animal spawners far away from towns is gonna make a huge difference in your performance. The unfortunate thing about the breeders is players really seem to like to make them a lot, and they tend to feel like it's going to be really useful for the town to have a breeder. Another thing that I learned here is walls themselves need to be far away from the main playing area. The wall itself will actually take up enough instances to cause problems. So you can see here, people's buildings are really too close together. There's too many of those animal breeders. See, I had to take more extreme measures than just getting rid of the breeders because this dock that you see here is actually like the communal area. It's where people arrive. They get here after the long voyage on a no map, no portal server, and the first thing they need to do is claim a bed, right? So a lot of the players who've been here have claimed a bed here at some point. So it's like this pseudo record of, of who's been to the dock house. But the problem here is that look at the instance count. It's like 17,000 instances and this was too much, and it wasn't functioning anymore as a communal area for a good chunk of the player base. Now, you'll see the same town, but with some changes made to help make the lag more manageable. The biggest improvements came from removing breeders entirely, or even just moving them to sort of the outskirts of town. So whenever possible, I pushed buildings and bases out to the edges, right? This way, when you're at one area, there's not too many instances. And where once was someone's base, I essentially moved it further away to spread people out, and I just put rocks where those bases once were. And the bases ended up getting pushed further out onto the edges, and I expanded the limits of town to be the entire meadow instead of just a part of the meadow. That meant that most of the town had 12,000 or less instances instead of areas having 17,000 while people were still building more. 
And I also realized that you can build a cool wall and that's great, but if the wall doesn't actually do anything, you don't have to use it, it doesn't feel real and all it does is take up instance counts and get in the way. So I basically got rid of all of the wall that were just inside the meadow. But we kept the wall in areas where it would actually protect from dangerous mobs running in and killing people who were not trying to get killed by goblins or swamp monsters. And as you can see, some players like to really expand out, right? So people have to have room to expand in addition to just having that location for their first house. And I was actually quite surprised because all I really had to do was inform players to look at their instances. Plenty of the players already knew that in the first place and made bases far away from the center. So I never had to move their places around at all. Because remember, you don't really want to move someone's place it's really abrasive and they'd think that it is totally destroyed. If they haven't logged in in a while and you have to do it because of the lag, I mean, it is what it is, you know? You can't have one person's thing ruin the whole experience for everybody else because it's making their situation unplayable. And that's sort of the thing about Valheim, right? You can dream pretty big. So it's important that you give space for your players to be able to build out without feeling like they're trapped because they can't build because it's gonna make other people lag. That's why it's really important to give people enough space to spread out, but help remind them that they need to check where they're building their place and focus on areas that have low instance counts. And it's always really important to have areas that are available to the players who don't have good computers at all, because they're only going to be able to play the game reasonably when they're basically out in the woods in their base without other people's bases loading on the edges. Keep these players in mind as well. There's loads of different kinds of people who play Valheim on different kinds of computers. If you want to learn more about how you can move buildings from Valheim instead of the entire server or the world file, then check out this video. It teaches you how to move buildings with the plan build mod. Alternatively, if you want to learn what produces the most lag, a comparison, a ratio between build objects, light sources, and monsters, then check out this other video then consider renting your own dedicated Valheim server at Zap Hosting using my link, JP Valheim.